How Drufus the Dragon Lost His Head by Bill Pete. Now this is a great one. So it's star P, P-E-E -E for Bill Pete, because the P-E-E -E is the first three letters of the author's last name. He also did all the pictures. Once upon a time, there was a family of dragons. They were a horrible bunch of beasts who traveled from country to country, stirring up trouble wherever they went. And one day on a trip to some faraway land, the dragon family flew into a dense fog and Drufus, the youngest of the dragons, lost track of the others. There he is. <coughs> Drufus kept circling about in an endless gray cloud, calling and calling in a squeaky small voice until he at last was too weary to flap his wings. When the little dragon gave up and went gliding down to land, land on a mountainside and crawled into a cave where he curled up in a corner to sleep for the night. Rufus awoke the next morning feeling very hungry and lonely and ever so hungry. So he left his cave to find something for breakfast. Drufus was just four years old and at that age dragons feed on small things like grasshoppers and beetles. And as he was searching the tall grass near the cave, he came across a grasshopper struggling helplessly in a spider web. And the spider was all set to pounce when suddenly Drufus snatched the grasshopper out of the web. For a long while, Drufus held the grasshopper by one leg, wondering what to do. How could he eat someone after saving his life? It didn't seem right, so he finally set the grasshopper free. After that, Drufus gave up eating grasshoppers and beetles and all other things that hopped or crept or crawled. And as much as he disliked it, the young dragon took to eating grass. It tastes awful, he said after a mouthful, but I'll just have to get used to it. And sure enough, the more grass he ate, the better he liked it. And pretty soon, Drufus found that grass to be tasty, and he was stuffing it down by the fistful. And in a surprisingly short time, the grass-eating dragon grew into a kind of giant monster, a huge scaly brute with long pointed tail and big leathery bat wings. Oh, there's too much of me now grumbled Drufus. I'm one big overgrown lunk with nothing to do but eat and sleep. And then he remembered his wings. He hadn't been on a flight since he was four years old, the day he got lost in the fog. Flying might be fun for a change, he said, and spreading his wings, he sailed up through the pines and then out over the countryside. It was a perfect day for flying. So sunny and clear, he could make out every haystack that dotted the fields far below. He could see cows in the meadow, ducks in a pond, and a cart traveling along the yellow ribbon of a road past the farmhouses. Further on, there were more roads and more houses, great clusters of houses with a castle towering above the rooftops. It was the castle of the king, and the king was out on the balcony to enjoy the beautiful morning. Great gazoodicans, he cried when he caught sight of Drufus. A dragon! A whopper of a dragon! And the king watched in amazement until the dragon had sailed away to disappear in the forest high on the mountainside. Oh, what a marvelous thing it would be, he said, to have that giant dragon's head on the wall of the great hall. And the king offered a reward of a hundred, hundred golden quadruples for the dragon's head, which was a lot of money in those days. The same afternoon, every brave knight in the kingdom rode up the mountainside in search of the giant dragon. Drufus was resting against a tree when the clumpity clump of the horses and the clankety clank of the armor re reached his ear. The two-ton dragon was much too weary from his sightseeing trip to go flying again, so he scurried back into his cave to hide. The knights were looking for a cave with bones scattered about the entrance. But if they had gone all the way into one of them, they would have seen Drufus. After a peek into Drufus' cave, they hurried on up the mountainside, peeking into all the other caves as they went, and the knights searched for months, peeking into hundreds of caves, but not one of them had the look of a dragon's cave. So at last, they gave up in despair. The dragon's hideout would have remained a mystery if a lamb 
hadn't gone astray one evening. The lamb had wandered into the pine forest on the mountainside, and before long a farm boy came looking for her. Lighting the way with a la lantern, the boy followed the lamb's trail. Small bits of wool had caught on the brambles here and there, and we came to a cave he'd raised his lamp to peer inside. And at first, there seemed to be nothing in the cave but rabbits, and then further back in the dark, he smiled, spied a small white blob, it was the lamb, curled up beside a scaly pointed dragon's tail, and looming up to the roof of the cave was the rest of the dragon, sound asleep and snoring. Here, Flossie, come on, Flossie, the boy called softly, careful not to awaken the dragon. The lamb finally raised her head and then hopped to her feet and came trotting out of the cave. And the boy and the lamb went scampering away through the forest. Halfway down the mountain, they met the boy's father and he was very angry. How many times must I warn you, he growled, to stay out of the woods after dark. But I had to find Flossie, said the boy, and you'll never guess where. She was sleeping in the cave with a dragon. Uh, a, dra a dragon, stammered his father. Uh, are you sure? A giant of a dragon, said the boy. Why, son, don't you know that there's a reward for his head? A hundred gold quadruples. The king's knight have been searching the mountains for months, and if you lead the knights to his cave, I'm sure you'll get at least part of the reward. Oh, I can't do that, said the boy. If he wouldn't hurt my lamb, he must be a good dragon, so I'll never tell anyone where he lives. And with nothing to worry about and so little to do, life was getting dull for Drufus, and he decided a, a change of scenery might help. One day, he bid goodbye to his cave, and he took off on a trip to most anywhere. And however, he picked the very worst day to go flying. And before he knew it, Drufus was caught in a storm. He wheeled around the head back for his cave, but too late. The wind, fierce wind twisted his neck and tail and ripped at his wings and sent him tumbling backwards into the clouds. The dragon battled the storm until his wings were tattered to shreds and then helpless as a butterfly. He went whirling down out of the clouds to land with an earth-shaking kerwump far out in the field. Drufus was so badly battered and bruised he couldn't move. He was just one big hurt from the point on its tail to the spikes on his nose. And as he lay sprawled out in the field while the storm went thundering away over the mountains, then he heard someone shouting, it's the dragon, the big dragon, I saw him fall. And pretty soon a small boy came running across the field followed by a man and a woman. It was the same boy who had found his lamb in the dragon's cave. Oh, it's him all right, said the boy after one look at Drufus. Oh, he appears to be dead, said his father. Oh, what a pitiful thing, said his mother. But he's not dead, cried the boy. He just blinked an eye. I can blink an eye, groaned Drufus, but that's all I'm just about done for. Um, are you gonna tell the king, the boy asked his father, and collect the hundred quadruples? You found him, son, so that's for you to decide. He's a good dragon, said the boy, and if I take care of him, he might get well. Drufus was covered with a straw stack to keep him from chilling during the night, and every day the boy brought him bunches of fresh grass and a tub of fresh water, and every day the dragon felt a little bit better. What makes your father so sad, asked Drufus one day. Oh, because we're poor, said the boy, and the reason we are poor is because of all these big rocks. They take up so much room, there's not much land left to grow anything. We tried every which way to get rid of them, but with everyone on the farm all pulling and pushing at once, we can't even budge one of the rocks. Mm-hmm, that's enough to make anyone sad, sighed Drufus. And early one morning, long before the first rooster crowed, Drufus burst out of the straw sack, feeling as fit as ever and as good as new, except for his wings. They were still so badly tattered they were useless. But the wings didn't matter. After all that awful crash, Drufus was through with flying, and besides, he had better things to do. Seizing the nearest boulder in his powerful claws, he jerked it off the ground and carried it away to the far end of the field where he dropped it. Kerblump. Oh. 
that was easy, said Rufus, and the next time he carried three rocks, then four and five, stacking them all into one pile, and when the poor farmer stepped out of the door of the cottage that morning, his land was half clear, and he let out a whoop that could be heard for a mile. I told you he was a good dragon, said the boy. He's a great dragon, said his father, tossing his, high, ha his hat high in the air. By new time, Drufus had piled every rock in one big pyramid. At last, the land was clear, and the happy farmer hitched his donkey to a plow and set across the field. Oh, if that's what you call plowing, said the dragon, I can do that too. Jabbing his pointed tail into the ground, Drufus went trotting along, leaving a big deep furrow and pulling up weeds and eating them as he went. After the plowing was done, he helped plant the wheat and he hauled logs from the forest and he used his long jagged tail for a saw. He cut enough firewood in one day to last the whole winter. And when he ran out of things to do, he stood in the wheat field with his great arms outstretched, serving as a very fine scarecrow. Well, he's a worth a lot more than a hundred quadruples, said the happy farmer. He's worth a thousand. But the happiest of all was Drufus. At last, he had become something useful, not just a big lunk of a thing, and he no longer worried about the king's knight coming after him. The farm was so far out in the country, hardly anyone knew it was there. There was only one to worry about, it was an old sheep herder who lived somewhere back in the hills. Once every spring, the man drove his ox cart over the bumpy road that ran past the farm on his way to the village to market his wool. The bad-tempered old fellow could be heard shouting at his oxen long before he passed by the farm. So there was plenty of time for Drufus to slip out of sight behind the barn. But one spring day as the ox cart passed by, Drufus was careless and left his long pointed tail sticking out. The old sheep herder knew very well that such a tail could only belong to a dragon. And when he reached the village late in the day, the old fellow went straight to the castle to tell the king. The next day, the king and all of his knights came riding up the road to the farm on their great war horses, armed with swords and lances. Drufus knew there was no use in hiding. They had heard he was there or they wouldn't have come. So he stood there in the field with the farmer and his son ran out to meet them. We have come for the dragon, said the king, and here's your reward of a hundred golden quadruples. I don't want the reward, said the farmer. The dragon's not for sale. I must have his head, said the king, so please stand aside. But he's a good dragon, said the boy. He's as tame as a kitten. He even sleeps by my bed every night. Look here, boy, growled the king. I've got no time for tomfoolery. Oh, I didn't mean all of him, said the boy. Only his head sleeps on my bed. He sticks his neck through the window and the rest of him stays outside. Well, now, son, that's a bit more like it, said the king. In fact, that gives me an idea, a grand idea. I'll borrow your dragon for just special occasions, and I'll pay you 20 quadruples each time. What do you say to that? Oh, it's up to the dragon, said the boy. Oh, make it 30 quadruples, said Drufus. Then 30 it is. And Drufus made his first visit to the king's castle on the eighth day of April, the day of the Grand Spring Festival, and people came from miles around crowding into the great hall, which was splendidly, splendorously bedecked with banners and streamers and festoons of flowers, and high up on the wall a giant of a dragon's head appeared through an elegant window framed in gold. A happy smiling dragon's head that brought cries of surprise and squeals of delight and set the crowd into a jolly frolicsome mood. And soon they were all singing and dancing to the music of trumpets and flutes, and the spring festival was going full tilt. The dragon was so carried away by all the merriment, he suddenly burst into song with a booming ear splitting voice that rocked the rafters and drowned out all the trumpets and flutes before he finally caught himself. In all the excitement, Drufus the dragon had lost his head, but only for a moment. And